Coming up this afternoon on the Marketplace, Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana cuts the rate at which it lends to commercial banks to 27%. We are live at the Bank of Ghana for more, plus have a discussion on its impact on the economy. Also in this bulletin, Ghana's total export earnings reached a record $13 billion, while our trade surplus hit favorable levels ending August this year. Plus, today on Showbiz, we shall be telling you how AI is shaping the future of the creative industry. Details of this are more lined up for you. Please stay. Thanks so much for your time. I am Pius Kojobaka and we want to begin business from the Central Bank because the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank has cut the rate at which it lends to commercial banks to 27%. Speaking at a news conference a while ago, Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ness Addison, noted that the action was influenced by the favorable economic outlook. Looking ahead to the end of the year, the balance of payments is projected to achieve a surplus driven by increased exports stronger remittance flows, and lower government external payments. In the assessment of the committee, preliminary data since the last MPC meeting held in July 2024 indicates that macroeconomic conditions have generally improved. Headline inflation has eased and growth has picked up. Fiscal policy implementation has been robust, providing impulse that is supportive of growth while monetary conditions have remained tight and supportive of the disinflation process. Headline inflation since the first quarter has declined for the fifth consecutive month by 5.4 percentage points. Core inflation has also de declined sharply over the same comparative period by 6.9 percentage points. These trends suggest that the disinflation process is on course. The latest forecasts show that the inflation will continue to ease towards the range target of 13 to 17 percent for the year and steadily track back towards the medium term target of 6 to 10 percent by the end of 2025, bearing unanticipated shocks. At the current juncture, the committee judged the risks to inflation outlook as fairly balanced. Given these considerations, the committee decided to lower the monetary policy rate by 200 basis points to 27%. Bank of Ghana also launched the Ghana Gold Coin Program. Our new Ghana Gold Coin which is a development which we think is important and reflects the commitment from the central bank to deepen our financial markets by offering other avenues for savers to invest. Everybody is getting up, rushing to buy dollar to save and put under pillows. You don't need to do that if you have options. Now, if you don't buy dollars, you can buy treasury bills or bonds. We are giving you an opportunity from the domestic gold purchasing program to also buy gold. This is what we are trying to launch now, and we call it the Ghana Gold Coin. The Ghana Gold Coin is manufactured from Dory Gold, dug out of Ghana, which has been refined to 99 percent, 99.99% purity. It is issued and guaranteed by the Bank of Ghana. It will be available in three different uh, units. That is the one ounce coin, the half ounce coin, and the quarter ounce coin to suit different investment needs. Each coin has the Ghana coat of arms in front and the independence arch at the back. The packing of the gold coin 
will be a wooden storage box, a transparent coin holder, and a certificate of ownership. The Ghana Gold Coin enables the Bank of Ghana to mop up extra liquidity in the banking sector and will supplement the use of our Bank of Ghana bills and overnight depots for liquidity management. It gives savers resident in Ghana an additional avenue to invest, reap the benefits of the Bank of Ghana's gold, domestic gold purchase program. Gold, as you all know, is a, has been remarkable and resilient as a financial asset and can serve as a hedge during periods of economic turbulence. We see the issuance of this Ghana gold coin as it democratizes assets to enduring financial assets, enabling Ghanaian residents to diversify their financial portfolios. In the next two weeks, this will be available in the market to be purchased through commercial banks using the Ghana CD and will be priced. And I want us live to go now to the Bank of Ghana for some quick updates from my colleague George Yafi, who is monitoring developments in that space for us. And George will pretty soon join us for some quick conversations on what the governor has been saying in relation to the policy rate cut and, of course, the newly introduced um, gold coin program. As you heard, the governor explain its purpose, saying that, well, it will mop up excess liquidity in the market. And I want to engage my colleague, George Yafi, who has joined us live now for some quick conversations on this. Thanks so much, George. And what other reasons did the governor give for this significant drop in the policy rate? And uh, Pius, you've earlier seen in the video about the arguments that the Bank of Ghana governor has been giving with respect to the fact that he thinks that the main reason that influenced the decision was due to the fact that they are in line to meet their inflation target for the year. And don't forget that the Bank of Ghana is primarily focused on inflation targeting. And are there any threats or anything that will prevent the Bank of Ghana from achieving this target? If you hold all those variables in terms of economic growth, in terms of the economy growing, and then inflation, the city, economic outlook, the governor believes that all these variables are favorable, and these things, there are not any threats to achieving that end of the inflation target. That's why the governor believes that if he looks at all these variables, then it looks like it is right to lower this rate by this significant margin, hoping that that would also help in stimulating growth. And that is why they went ahead with this significant reduction in the policy. Even ahead of this, engaging a lot of market watchers, uh, the projection was about 50 to maybe about 100 basis points. And so it looks like even the economy might grow larger or bigger than what government itself has projected. And they are even likely to do lower than the 15 to 17% uh, band in terms of inflation piles. And I'm curious, George, um, what is Ms. saying about the CD and, of course, how they intend to stabilize it going forward? Pius, there have been, if you monitor the, the currency front, you've seen that we've seen the rate of depreciation slow significantly. But again, if you also look at our reserves as well, some have argued that having over $7 billion as our reserves, maybe a lot more needs to be done to help in stabilizing the Ghana city in terms of intervention. But the governor's response was that he believes that they are in a strong position to support the Ghana city. So for those who are worried about the city's outlook getting into the December band and the Christmas festivities, the assurance is that they are monitoring the market and they would act as and when it matters. So for those who are worried that Pius is going forward, we could see the city suffer some shocks by it, uh, seeing some significant drop in its value. Be assured that the Bank of Ghana stands ready to support the currency. And some may even try to connect it with this gold coin that the governor has long because the governor believes that we should have an alternative source of investment on the market so that people who are having issues about what can they do so that it will also stop people uh, from rushing to buy dollars. So this investment asset has been put out 
It would also help in mopping up what the Bank of Ghana governor says, excess liquidity in the market, and that could help in stabilizing the Ghana city. Fios. About the economy, what has he been saying as well? Well, in terms of the outlook, the governor believes that it's favorable, I mean, to quote him, verbatim, him, he thinks that the economy is doing well, the economy is recovering, and if you look at all the variables that you want to evaluate in doing an assessment that whether an economy is doing well, all these variables are moving to the positive band, and therefore that news should get into the market, and that will go a long way in helping to reduce the cost of credit and ensure that the cost of doing business will also be influenced. And also, the fact that inflation as well will continue trending down as he says that they stand ready to do what they have to do to ensure that they hit their end of year target of 13 to about 17 uh, pious. All right, so George, let me hold you on once more and uh, of course engage you on the gold um, coin which the governor introduced um, a while ago. Tell us, so how is it going to be rolled out? So I think the governor gave an exact date, but just uh, just to just a recap, get you on that one. But these will be rolled out through the commercial banks, and uh, this is not the first time the Bank of Ghana is actually putting out an investment asset for Ghanaians, and these are targeted for Ghanaians because there's an argument that people have still a lot of liquidity out there, and therefore the Bank of Ghana needs to find a way to actually encourage these investors out there to mop up this liquidity. And so you are trying to do this to prevent people from, who have access to excess cities, if I should say, or more cities, from not moving out to buy dollars, but rather to buy these assets. And it will be rolled out through the commercial banks. And it will be priced based on how gold is quoted on the international market. So, Pius, if you have money and you think that you want to hedge against inflation, maybe the gold coin might be the option to go rather than rushing to buy dollars because if you also monitor dollars on the international market, it is struggling actually. But we've seen that gold has always been a safe haven for investors when it comes to trying to ensure that they don't lose their investment. So it'll be rolled out through the commercial bank. Those are the pricing, Pius, they'll be coming out with that in line with what happens on the international market as well, Pius. All right, thank you so much, George. You are live from the Bank of Ghana, giving us that quick update in relation to the cut in policy rate. And of course, we shall make frantic efforts as well to speak to economist Dr. Edu Ususa Kodier, who has joined us via Zoom for some conversation on the back of this. Thanks so much, uh, Prof uh, Professor Edu Ususa Kodier. Now, would you say that, well, this drop was expected, 200 basis points from 29 to 27%. How significant is that? Uh, that's again, sir. Sorry, again, um, we are struggling to hear you, so if you can reposition yourself um, as I take the question once again, I was asking that, well, the 200 basis points uh, we are learning, the Bank of Ghana has reduced um, the policy rate by, um, how significant is that? Well, it is significant given the circumstances in which we find ourselves. Remember that the BOG has been increasing the policy rate in their bid to fight inflation using monetary tools. Of course, we all know that uh, the fight against inflation is not only should, be, should, should not be left in the hands of BOG alone, but BOG is just using its available tools to fight inflation. So if the disinflation process uh, is, is uh, appreciated, it's okay, then it is um, okay for them to also reduce the policy rate. Of course, we have had 15% policy rate before in this country. So if it's at 27 or 20, if it's above 20, it is still high. Uh, and so we have to move gradually. We should not forget where we have come from. The year 2022 was devastating. Uh, the same rate depreciated inflation was, we ended the year with 54%. Uh, budget deficit was so high, Bank of Ghana had to step in and, and give some support and rescue the economy. So we have come far. And so, yes, we all expected, or we all expect the policy rate to go down as low as 15 or 10 percent 
But hey, we have been we have gone through difficult challenges. So in order not to you know jeopardize the gains, they want to release the policy rate gradually. They want to reduce it gradually because if you are on the path of recovery, this is not a time to take drastic measures. You have to be measured in whatever you are doing. So I think BOG is just being measured in the approach to ease uh, or reduce the policy rate. They don't want to give like 500 basis points of reduction. No, 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 no. All you right. have to do it gradually to see the impact as and when uh, they can. And I'm sure they will meet in November. If things improve, they may reduce it again. Mm -hmm. And if in uh, January they meet and things have improved, inflation has come down to single digit. I'm sure they'll slash it to somewhere 15 or 17 percent. All right, so do you get the sense that, well, this also signals that the economy is doing well, bearing in mind that our debt levels are increasing despite the complete, uh, completion of the domestic debt exchange program? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the macro fundamentals are many. Um, there are a number of indicators that we use to measure the macro fundamentals. So while some may be positive, others may be still problematic. So yes, the governor himself has acknowledged uh, some of the gains we have made as a country with regards to the macro fundamentals. Our reserves, we are building reserves. Uh, the gold purchase arrangement is ongoing. Budget deficit is being contained. Well, of course, when it comes to, uh, and the growth has picked up, in fact, the growth rate of 6.9% uh, is so surprising to many because a country that has gone through domestic debt exchange, you know, we will not expect the country to pick this group up like that. So it's, it's something remarkable, and I think we commend uh, the government for that achievement. But back to your question, the public debt, yes, is still a worrying situation. It is a reason IMF insisted that the government of Ghana restructure its debt before they give the IMF program. So your question is right. We have restructured. Why the increase again? You also agree with me that our city has worried us. And in, in Ghana, if you want to talk about any macro uh, indicator, I think the exchange rate comes first because it triggers or it affects almost every other macro indicator. It affects inflation, transport costs, cost of white cost of tomatoes, and also the public debt. So because the, there's an external debt component of the public debt. So whenever the city depreciates, it affects that. In fact, in the year 2022, mm. the Minister of Finance told us that the exchange rate effect alone added 90 billion cities to our debt. The research we have done, I've done with my colleagues, indicates that the exchange rate contributes to 29% of the development of the public debt. 29%. And it's a worrying situation. So in as much as you want to manage the debt, we must not lose sight of the impact of the exchange rate on the development of the public debt. All right. So, so it's gone from the exchange rate and other things. In a minute, I want you to do this for me. So ultimately, how do you think that this will impact on the cost of borrowing or doing business in the country? The drop, I mean. It is, it is okay. I think uh, George even said that many predicted 50 to 100 basis, uh, basis uh, point reduction. Now we have 200. So it means that the BOG has met, gone beyond the expectation of businessmen and women. They all understand the difficulties that we find ourselves. So it will reduce the cost of borrowing. But uh, cost of borrowing, the policy rate is not the only determinant of the cost of borrowing. Non-performing loans, they are all part of it. Um, the digital, the address system of borrowers. Somebody comes to borrow your money, they cannot find a person to chase uh, for your money. So uh, we must rather tackle all the determinants of the cost of borrowing, of which the policy rate is one. And, all right. And from that, from that angle, I think it will help reduce the cost of borrowing, and businessmen and women will be happy with the Bank of Ghana with this um, approach. Very well. Thank you so much, Dr. Edu Owusu Sakodia, for joining us on the marketplace. He's an economist. Let's touch on one of our headline stories. The country's total export earnings continue to reach record levels. The Bank of Ghana puts the amount at $13 billion. Now, there is more from the latest economic and financial data released by the Bank of Ghana. 
Gold was the highest contributor, getting Ghana more than $7 billion as at the end of August this year. Oil exports, on the other hand, got the country to $2.7 billion. Oscar Code did just under a $1 billion. However, on the other hand, we spent $10.1 billion to finance our imports for the first eight months of this year. The development, however, resulted in our trade surplus reaching $2.7 billion. The trend has shown some significant increase over the past four quarters since last year. You're still watching The Marketplace. We are back with more. Peace day. This is still the marketplace and time now for showbiz and welcome to another edition of showbiz right here on the marketplace. Now today we delve into a topic that is shaping the future of creativity and innovation that is artificial intelligence in the creative industry. As AI technology rapidly evolves, um, its application in art, film, um, and as well as music and of course writing are transforming how creators express themselves. Recently, Times Magazine unveiled its highly anticipated 100 most influential people in AI list, sparking new conversations around the role of AI in the creative space. Joining us to break this down is culture journalist who's been at the forefront of the discourse, Kenneth Awachi Dako, joins me in the studio for some quick conversations on this. Thanks so much, um, Ken, for joining me on the Marketplace. Now, tell me how AI has impacted on the creative industry generally. So, it has done... Um, a lot of good for the industry, um, especially considering the past two years, there has been a very fast and wide reach when it comes to artificial intelligence mm. on the creative space. It is doing so much as well in the, corporate, uh, in the corporate world and also in the business space as well, but creativity when it comes to like show business, when it comes to music, movies, um, you know, um, and other art forms, it is also doing very you know, significantly well in those areas. For instance, earlier this year, we had seen a lot of songs basically being you know, compose using artificial intelligence. You've mm. seen there was, I think, um, some couple of months ago, there was a certain music beef in the okay. American hip hop industry. Mm. And there was the use of artificial intelligence by even people who were not even, you know, attached to the music world in any way. There was a comedian that actually called King Willonius or something like that, mm. who actually composed um, uh, an AI version of a disc record to another artist in the US, which also sparked a lot of controversy. For issues in that specific, you know, maybe ordinarily, the AI list that you were mentioning by Times Magazine that was published earlier this, this month, ordinarily you wouldn't find a lot of comedians and some of these people in there, but because of how he used artificial intelligence in that innovative way, his name made it onto that list, which is why we are talking about it, its it, use it, in this, it, this it, space. Is there any back to these claims, really? Yes, so since its inception, and it's, um, you know, as far as the numbers are concerned, mm. there are some figures to back this. Right. So if you look at this, you realize that um, there was a, a research that was published by Forbes earlier this year okay. that indicated that AI will have an estimated, you know, 21% net increase on the GDP of the United States alone by the year 2030. 30. So if you look at this projection and the other ones that we have been we, we're showing on the screen as time goes by, you realize that there is a lot of potential that is, you know, is, is can be, you know, derived from all of this as well. If you look at this as well, it'll tell you that 64% of businesses right. expect artificial intelligence to increase productivity. Right. And that is something that the creatives in the entertainment space are also looking forward to capitalizing from. Great. Thank you so much, future. Kenneth, for joining me in Studio 4 um, Showbiz. That's it for the Bulletin. I am Pius Kojo Bakasi at 5 p.m.